So today we're looking at the KuGeek LS1 light strip. This is a um, Wi-Fi, so 2.4 gigahertz, USB powered light strip. It is not particularly bright. It is 500 lumens for two meters, but it does do the full 16 million colors and it is a little bit waterproof, meaning it's IP65, but that would be the strip only, not the controller part of this. So you don't want to get water on the controller, but the strip itself, you could spray down, wash, that kind of thing. This is a Apple HomeKit compatible light strip, but it also does allow you to work this with uh, Amazon's Madam A or Google Assistant. So it's one of those nice devices, multi-purpose. You can connect it to multiple ecosystems. Kind of, you know, just make sure you're, you're covered. Let's take a look. So the first thing you'll notice about the Kugeek light strip is that it is quite a bit smaller. The box is downright tiny. Um, it's clearly marked. It works with Apple HomeKit, which is great. And um, it's it's clear what's inside the box, right? We like that. But again, I can't get over how really small this is. Um, some of the other light strip boxes are literally two and sometimes maybe three times the size. So as we get into the box here, you can see right there, right up in front, there is the home kit code. And then you can see there is the light strip. Uh, what I don't see though, is the power. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and indeed that is the case. You can see here, it's empty. There is absolutely no, uh, no power brick in here. So you're gonna have to supply your own, or you could potentially plug this into like the, uh, the Kugeek um, power strip, which does have the three USBs on there. We've got the HomeKit code directly on the device itself, so the controller note. Again, you don't want to get this wet. Um, so let's plug this in over to USB power that I've got here locally and take a look at the app. So I'm here in my Udemy course house. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Udemy course, please do that in the links below. There's a coupon code in there. And uh, we're just going to add in using the typical HomeKit setup. We put in our HomeKit code. It's going to ask us what the network, whether we want to connect to is. So this is going to use that wireless simple configuration protocol to transfer the settings of our existing device, the iPad or iPhone that we're adding this in, over to the light strip, right? So nice, simple, no messing around with um, WPA2 or pre-shared keys or anything like that, just simple. So depending on your setup, this might take a, a few seconds to do. And then we get to go in here and rename the light to whatever we want. So always, always think about your naming convention a little bit. Make sure that you understand um, what you're going to name these things because the names you're going to be able to use via Siri to be able to connect this and control it with your voice. Also, um, I'm not going to change the room for this particular device, but put it in a, in a room, use rooms, use zones. So there we go. We're all done. And as you can see over on the right hand side, the Kugeek light is already there. It's in the default room and we can tap on that, long press it. We could adjust the brightness if we want to. We can go in, we can change the name again here. Again, you can see the, it's a Kugeek uh, LS1. So let's go play around a little bit with the color. So I sync the videos up here so you can see the, the lights as I'm actually adjusting the color here. So first thing we're gonna do is we'll adjust the brightness here. Um, so I've actually got this in a light box and I'm trying to show um, shine light on it so it's a little bright right now so you can see the lights go up and down. It's not always easy to film a light directly. directly. So now that we've done that, let's go into the colors. We'll click on edit and let's try to change the colors here. So you can see there's a pink there, having a little bit of trouble. We can just tap around, we can change the colors. You can see them changing um, fairly seamlessly. It's really quick, it's responsive. If I can just um, kind of circle my finger around, you can really get uh, an idea of how responsive this is. And that's Wi-Fi, that's exactly what, we'd, we, what we would expect. There's constant communication going on between these, which is really nice. If I go over and actually shut the light box off, um, you'll see here it'll get a little bit uh, darker here. There you go, and now you can start to see this thing starts to brighten up a little bit more. And I'll do that same kind of circle test. You can see the entire environment around the light starts to really go in. So you can see the colors, these are pretty saturated. At half the dimness of the Philips Hue or the Life X, it's not gonna really compare, it's not in the same category. Um, it's not gonna be really blindingly bright, but it is still really nice. It's gonna put a nice little glow. Um, I can easily see this going underneath like a kitchen counter, or on your shelves in behind. So let's go and take a look at the Kugeek app. 
So Kugeek has done a lot of work on their app in the last uh, year, year and a half. Um, it's gotten a lot better than it used to be. Uh, I'm, I'm still not sure that I love um, the color palettes, the way they display them, uh, but it's very functional and I can see how other people might like that. Again, that's one of the great things about HomeKit is I can use any HomeKit compatible app to control any HomeKit compatible device, right? So if I don't like the Kugi, that's fine. I'll go over, I'll use the, uh, the Eve systems or I'll use the Vocal Link or the Apple native home app or whatever I want, right? So that's kind of nice. Um, I can also see here that I can change the languages, right? I've, I've got the ability to set up this for the Amazon Madam A integration directly, um, as well as the Google Assistant. So I could set those up. I haven't yet. Um, I might do that in another video. If anyone's interested, please let me know in the comments below. So going back over to the Koo Geek light strip itself here, you can click on that color wheel and really um, kind of draw and, and figure out whatever color you want to change it to, right? Which is nice. You could pick a uh, photo as well, right? You have the brightness color. So a lot of options there. Um, and at the bottom, you have the detail tab, which allows you to do some things like actually set timers without, these are not HomeKit timers, I don't believe. Um, it's actually within the KuGeek Lite itself, the latest firmware. So you can update your firmware, make sure you're at the latest, right? All that good stuff. So overall, um, it's a good product. It's the color is nice. It works in a USB strip, which means um, or USB powered, which means you can put it just about anywhere. The Wi-Fi power, uh, it is going to require you to be on a Wi-Fi network, but it's it's there, right? The um, the waterproofing, the IP65 is a nice touch. It means you can use it in your kitchen and not worry about it getting splashed, right? That's a nice thing. Um, the timers, yeah, I'm going to probably do that in um, either uh, Madam A or in HomeKit anyways but it's nice to, that they've put some additional little touches in here. So what do you guys think? Is there anything I've missed? Um, comments, put them below, questions, you know, definitely reach out. I will do my best to um, answer any questions that come in. Likes are always appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, that would be awesome. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that. And uh, if you wanna take a look into my Udemy course, there's a link down below where you can learn to make your house a little smarter using Apple HomeKit.